1,826 earthquakes. Three exceeded a magnitude 6.0. 28 of which fell within the magnitude 5 range. Unusual movement, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey folks. I hope you have had a fantastic week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is Sunday, July the 17th, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from July the 9th through July the 15th. It was on this day in 1998, when a 7.0 struck New Guinea. At least 2,183 people were killed, thousands injured. About 9,500 were left homeless and about 500 were missing as a result of a tsunami generated in the Cisno area. Maximum wave heights reached an estimated 32 feet. Several villages were completely destroyed and others suffered extensive damage. This is what's happening, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Two East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office deputies and two Baton Rouge Police Department officers were killed and three others wounded during a Sunday morning shooting on Airline Highway near the Hummond Air Plaza. Officers responded to reports of a man armed with an assault rifle, of course, at a convenience store around 9 a.m. Sunday. Authorities have confirmed that the first of three suspects is a Missouri man who was killed after the shooting. Two other suspects were taken into custody in West Baton Rouge Parish and are being questioned by police. This is terrible news and it pains us to report such nonsense. Prayers and thoughts go out to those involved. By the way, how long before Lord Obama is on television preaching about gun control? Post your guess down below. Billionaire Donald Trump braced his newly minted running mate Mike Pence as a man of honor, character and honesty on Saturday, using their official coming out party as a platform to contrast the Indiana governor with his November opponent Hillary Clinton. The 57-year-old Indiana lauded Trump, this builder, this fighter, this patriotic American who has set aside a legendary career in business to build a stronger America. Trump told a hotel ballroom of several hundred invited guests that Pence is the leader who will help us deliver a safe society and a really prosperous society for all Americans. He is a solid, solid person. Folks I personally like this guy already. Pokemon Go has led to muggings, car crashes, cliff rescues and now, a shooting. A 19-year-old man and his 16-year-old friend were sitting in a car on Primrose Lane playing Pokemon Go around 1.30 a.m., when a man walked out of his house nearby and fired shots at the car, according to a news release from the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Moments before the shooting, they said they heard someone say, Did you catch him? The teens told the sheriff's office. One of them said, Yeah, did you? That's when they heard several shots fired. The car sped off. They arrived at the 19-year-old's house and checked themselves for injuries. They tried to check for bullet holes on the car in the dark but didn't see any damage. They thought someone might have just been trying to scare them and went inside. It wasn't until the next morning, when the teen's mother found bullet holes in the rear tire, hubcap and fender, that they reported the shooting to the sheriff's office. Folks, use some common sense. I wouldn't allow this game to drag you into an unknown neighborhood. Or off a cliff. Or, in front of a car. A new discovery by a team of scientists, lead by Denville-based Tyler Lyson, is rewriting textbooks when it comes to turtles. Based upon their research, which was confirmed earlier this week by an international group of paleontologists, turtles developed shells to help them burrow underground. Not for protection, as many scientists previously thought. Now that is interesting. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 1,826 earthquakes. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 4,500. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 324 earthquakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 5.8 that struck Fiji. Well folks, our earthquake watch proved useful as immediately following its issuance, we experienced earthquakes that exceeded a magnitude 5. 3 in totally actually. We had a 6.0 strike Tonga on Saturday, July 10th, a 6.3 that hit Ecuador on the 11th, and a 6.3 that hit Raoul Island, New Zealand on the 13th. The Ecuadorian earthquake, the most impactful of the three, 
resulted in one being injured. Blackouts were reported in several area cities, and landslides were reported on mountainous roads. According to the Geophysical Institute, there have been 2,134 aftershocks since the April 16 earthquake. The strongest aftershocks came in May and was of magnitude 6.8. As previously mentioned, we had 28 magnitude 5 strike. These earthquakes were centered mostly along the Ring of Fire. The most notable of these include a 5.8 that struck Ecuador on July the 11th, a series of quakes, 8 in total, that struck New Zealand. These include a 5.4, 5.1, and several magnitude 5.0s. Finally, we experienced a 5.0 that stuck Vanuatu on Saturday, July the 10th. It was this earthquake that sparked our need to issue the earthquake watch. We have registered 96 earthquakes that fell within the magnitude 4 range. This was a 14% increase over the previous week. The most noteworthy earthquakes in this scale include a series of quakes that hit Vanuatu. These being a 4.9, 4.8, 4.6, and a 4.4. Greece experienced a 4.4 on Thursday, July the 14th, and Oklahoma made the list, with a 4.4 that struck Fairview on Saturday, July the 10th. The remaining earthquakes struck, for the most part, locations here in the States. We'll start with Hawaii, which registered 68. All of which were minor, with the exception of a 3.4 that struck Honon on a pupil on Saturday, the 10th. Swarm activity was limited to this area, which clocked in 28 earthquakes last week, and the volcano, which experienced 27. Alaska clocked in 597 earthquakes. This breaks down to nearly 85 per day. The strongest to strike was a 4.9 in Shishmar. In the news, one by one, People overturned massive, white, heavy-duty bags at the port of Anchorage Saturday afternoon, spilling out their contents. A hodgepodge of debris that had found its way into the ocean, eventually landing on Alaska's remote coastlines. There were shoes alongside boys and styrofoam. There was a collection of blue aluminum water bottles, apparently dumped into the ocean in a container spill, as well as metal containers marked with Japanese writing, likely debris from the deadly 2011 tsunami there. In fact, Gulf of Alaska keeper workers have found highway markers with Japanese writing and heavy, dense plastic stakes used in Japan as property markers. Washington experienced a 73% increase in seismic activity when compared to the previous week. 41 were registered in total. The most intense being only a 2.1 that hit Inseat. The average magnitude for all earthquakes to strike Washington was a 1.1. Oregon's earthquake activity remains normal. Only ant were experienced. The strongest registered was a 2.2 in Lakeview. California clocked in 668. This breaks down to roughly 95 per day. The most powerful experienced over the past week in the sunny state was a 3.2 in Taft. Swarm activity was experienced in the usual locations. This includes Anza, which registered 51, Cobb with 34, and the Mammoth Lakes area with 62. Nevada clocked in 156. This was a 21% decrease over earthquake activity from the previous week. The strongest experienced was only a 2.1 that hit Parump. Swarm activity was also centered around the usual locations. This includes Beatty with 31, and Hawthorne with 50. Idaho registered 6 all week. The most intense to strike was a 2.0 in Shelley. In the news here, southeastern Idaho officials have found a second bat to test positive for rabies this week. According to Southeast Idaho Public Health, a bat in Bannock County was found to have the disease, marking the second rabid bat in the area this week and the fourth in the state this year. These are the first bats to test positive for rabies in Southeast Idaho since 2014. Montana experienced 27. The most intense registered was a 2.3 in Butte. Wyoming clocked in 12. This was a 42% increase when compared to the previous week. The strongest experienced was a 1.9 that hit the Old Faithful Geeses. Utah registered 9. The strongest reported was a 1.8 in Pangage. Health officials with the county and state closed Utah Lake on Friday due to a toxic algal bloom that covers 90% of the lake's surface and subsurface. But before the official closure, the public was still able to access the lake to fish, swim and recreate, exposing themselves to dangerous toxins. According to the Utah County Health Department, at least eight people have reported illnesses due to exposure to the toxic lake water since July 10. Symptoms related include diarrhea and vomiting. 
One mother even reported that her son woke up with a rash covering 80% of his body after swimming in the lake. That's pretty wild. Oklahoma clocked in 35. Included in this are several notable earthquakes. We have the previously mentioned 4.4, 3.2, and a 3.1 in Fairview, a 3.6 in Alva, and 3.1 in Blanchard and Langston. Speaking of the 4.4 that struck, rumbling began just after 9 p.m. Some 553 people in four states reported on the USGS website they felt it, with 67 reporting light shaking, though no one reported damage. The New Madrid Seismic Fault Experience Movement. These being a 1.6 in Lilbourne, Missouri, 1.5 in New Madrid, and a 1.4 in Wrigley, Tennessee. The North American Craton Experienced Movement as well. Millinicket. Maine with a 2.1 and a 1.1 in Malone, New York. Our Canadian pals to the north experienced seismic movement as well. 14 earthquakes in total. 43% of which struck Haynes Junction. The most notable recorded struck this area. This being a 2.3. Before we wrap up, we can't end things until we discuss the extremely rare earthquake that struck off the coast of Florida yesterday. This was a magnitude 3.7 that struck off the coast of Daytona Beach shores. Florida is not considered to be a state that is subject to earthquakes and only several minor shocks have occurred in the state. In fact, only one earthquake has caused damage in Florida, according to the USGS. This earthquake occurred in 1879. Residents of St. Augustine reported shaking that damaged plaster walls and knocked items from shelves. That's very, very interesting. And that's it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Make certain to like and subscribe. Share if you feel inclined. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star. Guys, stay safe. Have a great night.